watchword for everything Best Lock does. To help further assure the highest possible product performance for our customers, we have prepared the following information concerning servicing and troubleshooting the interchangeable core. This program is designed to further assist the team in increasing their combinating productivity. And most importantly, it builds upon the strong tradition of teamwork that has made Best Lock successful in meeting customers' needs. In this video, we will discuss pre-combinating operational instructions, testing combinated cores, a variety of useful troubleshooting procedures, and techniques to increase your combinating productivity. We will also discuss combinator calibration techniques. Before you begin combinating your cores and keys, there are a few simple checks you should perform. First, insert a blank key and check the plug rotation. Use a plastic-headed hammer to tap on the top of the upper half of the figure eight of the core to rotate the key. You can spray LPS lubricant through the segment holes to ease the rotation. If you find that there is tightness in the operation of the control lug, use the ejector pin and push out the control lug so that it is in the thrown position. And then spray the lug with LPS lubricant. Occasionally, there may be some foreign debris in the barrels. If this is the case, simply tap the rear of the core on a Teflon block to remove any debris or use a number 33 reamer to assure that the barrels are clean. On cores with the new clip ring, don't strike the rear of the core with a hammer because you may cause damage. Prior to combinating the core, make sure that the LPS lubricant is dry. Best Lock does not recommend mixing wet LPS lubricant and graphite. <laughs> Once the core has been combinated, if it is not operating correctly, here are some troubleshooting techniques. If you find that the key is not operating the core, it may be that the key cuts and milling may have burrs. Check all of the key cuts and brush the key with a handheld wire brush if any burrs are present. Another possibility to consider is that the key cut is not correct. Use the key cut indicator to check that the proper key codes were cut. Recut the key if necessary. If the key cuts are correct, the combinator may be slightly out of adjustment. Later in this video, we will discuss how to properly calibrate your key cutter. If the key is cut correctly, yet still doesn't work, it may be that the core has been miscombinated. First, recheck the math used in converting the curves to pin segments. Confirm that the total of the pin segments is correct for the particular system you're using. You can also use the thumb check method to check if the stack height in each barrel is consistent. You can do this by simply placing your thumb firmly on the ejector pin, referencing the depth of the first barrel, and then check each barrel against each other. Any missing or additional segments will cause a change of depth. If necessary, eject the pin segments and recombinate each barrel. Eject barrels 4 through 7 first, since these are the positions where your code numbers change. It could be that there is some foreign material in the core. If this is the case, use LPS lubricant to flush the material out of the core. Again, when the LPS lubricant is dry, re-lubricate the core with graphite. <laughs> If you experience difficulty with inserting or extracting a key, check to see if the bottom segment is upside down, a pin segment, and if necessary, recombinate. Difficult key insertion and extraction can also be caused when the stack of segments is too tall because extra pins were inserted. To find out if this is the case, use the thumb check method and then, if necessary, recombinate the barrel. Also, an improper capping depth can prevent the segments from lifting to the required position, which makes key insertion and extraction difficult. A visual check can identify this problem. If needed, recap the barrel. Difficulties with key insertion and extraction 
can also be caused when there are no springs in the barrel. Check to make sure the springs are present by using the ejector pin, and then, if needed, recombinate the barrel. Another cause of difficult key insertion and extraction is hang-ups of the pin segments. Check for segment hang-up by inserting the ejector pin and feeling for spring response. If the segments do not move smoothly, then the segments are hung up. Correct hang-ups by ejecting the pin segments and reaming the barrel with a number 33 reamer. Be aware to not go too deep. If the operating key rotation is not smooth, there may be burrs in the core. First, try applying graphite. Then insert and turn the operating key a few times. If necessary, place the core on a Teflon block and lightly tap on the solid portion of the figure eight with a plastic head hammer and then try rotating the key. If the key rotation is still not smooth, the segments may be rubbing on the rotating surfaces. To determine this, rotate the key 180 degrees and look through the ejector holes for any shiny areas. If there are any, recombinate the barrel. And if the condition is still present, replace the core. If the control lug seems to be sticking, it may be necessary to break the control shear line. To aid in breaking the control shear line, apply graphite and then insert and turn the control key several times with the core held upside down. If necessary, use a plastic headed hammer to tap on the top of the upper half of the figure eight of the core to rotate the key. Then try rotating the key. If the core will not operate properly, the segment holes may have been drilled with the control lug in the wrong position, causing the control lug to only partially extend. If this is the case, contact the factory and return the core. If you experience any difficulty inserting the core into the housing, the throw pins may have rotated so that they are not in alignment with the core throw pin holes. To correct this, rotate the throw pins to the proper alignment with a mortise cylinder wrench or a flat bladed screwdriver, and then check for proper lock timing. If this doesn't correct the problem, check to see if the throw pins in the core housing are sagging, and if they are, pry the throw pins to their proper position. If the throw pin holes in the core have not been drilled to a sufficient depth, then you may also experience difficulty inserting the core. To check this, compare the depth of the throw pin holes with a good core, and if the depth is too shallow, replace the core. Following the steps just outlined, will help you locate and correct the vast majority of problems you may encounter. However, in working with the cores, there are also a few basic practices you should always follow to avoid causing damage to the core components. First, use Teflon blocks or equivalent material to work cores loose. Never use metallic blocks. Don't stamp the core markings on the cores with harsh or excessive force. Always make sure to stamp the core markings on the solid or upper half of the figure eight core. Always use a plastic headed hammer when working with cores. Never use a ball peen or other metal hammer. Only strike the core on the solid lobe. In an uncombinated core, use LPS lubricant to lubricate and flush out the core. Before combinating the core, make sure the LPS has dried. In a combinated core, use graphite as the lubricant. Best Lock does not recommend mixing wet LPS lubricant and graphite. The following tips will help to increase your combinating productivity. Do not write out segments to be used in cores. 
work out the math in your head as you combinate. When two similar segments are in sequence, pick up both segments at once. Combinate four or more cores at one time. Combinate the first barrel on the core, push the segments into the barrel with the ejector pin, combinate all the remaining barrels before using the ejector pin again. Use bins to hold your pin segments instead of combinating kits. When stamping keys and cores, stamp all with similar markings at one time, then go to the next marking. Combinate all barrels, then spring and cap them. When testing cores, keep a bowl of graphite and simply dip each key into the bowl instead of shooting graphite into the core. Now let's take a look at how to keep your combinator in calibration. The first step in calibrate do this. Set the depth selector dial to the calibrate setting and make seven cuts. Remove the key from the key carriage and position the key into the best micrometer key gauge with the thimble pointing up. The key cuts should be on top and the bow of the key to the left. Make sure the key is flat against the back of the frame. For left-handed patented keys, position the bow to the right. Center the third or fourth key cut under the conical point of the spindle. Rotate the spindle down by turning the thimble clockwise. You'll hear a clicking sound when the spindle bottoms out. Now read the measurement on the gauge. There are three scales on the gauge. Read the largest visible number on scale number one. Then count the number of lines between the largest number and the end of the thimble. Each of these lines represents 25 thousandths of an inch. Add this value to the number from scale number one. Next, read the largest number on scale number two that is even with or below the center line on scale number one, and count the number of lines visible. Each of these lines represents one thousandth of an inch, and add these to the number on scale number one. Next, read the increment line on scale number three that best aligns to a line on scale number two. Each of these lines represents one ten thousandth of an inch. Add together the values. If your value is within one thousandth of an inch of two hundred fifty thousandths, then your combinator is in calibration. That is, your value should be greater than two hundred forty nine thousandths, but less than two hundred fifty one thousandths of an inch. If your combinator is outside this range, refer to the combinator service manual for complete calibration instructions. This concludes this program on troubleshooting tips. If you have any questions regarding the procedures described in this program, do not hesitate to contact the factory for assistance and further explanation.